Hello, my name is Eduardo Verona. I work for USDA APHIS PPQ here in Miami, Florida. Currently, I'm serving as liaison to the Giant African Snail Program for the USDA. It's a joint effort, USDA, with the State of Florida Department of Agriculture, and uh, we're working very, very hard to delimit the snail in South Florida and also possibly to control its spread and even potentially eradication. Um, the program consists of uh, different facets. Uh, some of it involves survey. Uh, here we are in a residential area that is positive for the giant African snail. What we do is when we come to survey a property is we contact the homeowner first. We ask for permission to enter the property. If with that consent, we then go into the property, survey the property. We look in areas that the snail would hide, areas such as moist areas, uh, near walls. They do also get into weeds and into flower pots. Anywhere at all that's a good hiding place for a snail is what we're looking for. On this particular property that we surveyed a little while ago, we actually found the snails along the walls uh, very close to the grass. The reason is right now we're in a dry period in South Florida. It's dry, it's a little bit cooler, and the snails will try to find hiding places uh, for to be able to survive what is our winter here. Uh, in addition to that, once we survey a property, we also uh, have some control measures. We are using iron phosphate, which is a relatively non-toxic uh, Organi or organic uh, chemical, and uh, that we use to to uh, we we use it as a uh, as a control measure on the properties. It's very effective on the smaller on the smaller snails. Another measure that we have also for control is actual manual control. That's very important because some of these larger snails can move around. So it's very important that when we when we go to properties that we actually manually remove the larger snails and follow up with more survey, follow up with more treatments. This is an ongoing program. This is not something that's going to be taken care of right away. This is going to involve multiple uh, survey efforts, going back to the same properties time and again, not just to survey and to manually control snails, but also to do the treatments. Uh, we've had amazing, amazing cooperation from homeowners. Uh, one of the major ways that we have found uh, of the 12 of the 14 cores, or we call them cores, of the 14 areas in Miami-Dade County that have been found positive for giant African snail, 12 of those have been as a result of homeowner calls. So outreach in this program has been uh, extremely important. And we have done outreach through billboards, through radio spots, through television. Uh, we are constantly getting coverage uh, from television stations about the issue. The reason is because giant African snail is not just an agricultural pest, but in addition to that, it has some other problems. It can become a very bad nuisance pest. The snails will crawl up the side of houses, leave their feces there, their slime trails. But in addition to that, they can also pose a, a human health hazard. Uh, the, 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 these, these snails do harbor uh, nematodes that can cause, uh, it's, it's a vector for human disease, potentially encephalitis. So uh, for those three reasons, it's very, very important, not just, again, because it is an ag pest, but for the other two reasons, it's very important that we try to control the pest in Miami-Dade County.